Well, my, my personal recording is going now, so I, I guess what, what I got to start off with is, uh, wow, it hasn't been that long since we did like a formal recording and like we talked the other day on streams. So um, the Experimental Branch version uh, 50.12 is now available to people who, uh, you know, are crazy and are okay with games crashing and features missing. I, I guess we can either start off with positive things or like negative things. What, what would you prefer to start off with? Uh, things that are that were broken that needed to be fixed immediately or uh, what exactly has been added? Well, at the very least, nobody was rude about the experimental, probably because there is a pretty heavy, you know what you're getting into vibe to it. The most embarrassing thing is definitely all the issues with Burroughs. Like there were a lot of issues with the Burroughs screen that I just, for one thing, I didn't know that we had a vanilla select all because I never use Burroughs. Oh no. So I ended up having to re-implement that with like in a bit of a DF hackish way by just adding a hotkey and that that's get, that's going to be better soon. Uh, We have graphics and such for that, that like, I'm waiting on the graphics downloading right now, actually. It's it's kind of funny because, like, we have, we, we didn't have one way back when it launched. And then, like, within, it was, like, two weeks later or something, Tarn just added, like, a very Tarn-like solution of here is, like, some letters you can click that'll just put them all there. Um, but, yeah, no, uh, it, it was, that, that was a, a rough minute. And I know that some people, or one person was playing on a Steam Deck, he's like, well, I guess I can't use Burroughs. <laughs> Yeah, the current solution is hopefully more general. Uh, like, you can search woodcutter and press shift A, and it'll put all the woodcutters in the burrow, and that should be a bit better, I think. Yeah. Also, I think having a hotkey there in the first place is a good thing. I've been, I actually spent, like, it's what I've been doing all morning is implementing hotkeys in a bunch of places. A lot of them are just question marks on my thing because they don't actually like a lot of them are new hotkeys but the unit lists have more hotkeys to them now and all sorts of stuff like that i like hotkeys actually but uh like th this patch has been mostly focused on like ui improvements so I'm, I'm curious about like what what has the feedback been like to your solutions for searching and filters uh, generally pretty good a lot of people came up with like basic usability suggestions that uh I specifically built all of this to make these things easier to implement. Like, that was the entire point. Someone said, like, skills should be sorted, like, the squads list should be sorted by skills by default. That was a really quick one-line change, so I did that. You know, that sort of thing. Uh, the most complex suggestion that I figured should get in, that I got in just this morning, is uh, the, uh, like... The labors list when you're editing a uh, work detail now shows what work details have those labors attached, like in the same way units do, just in a little row on the right. Yeah, I I I like the 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 work details changes. I think have been kind of the 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 biggest. Uh, well, at least once the the crashes got fixed. I know that there was like some other little weird eccentricities with like. Uh, some like when you manually assign one dwarf to hauling, it doesn't unassign all other dwarves from hauling anymore. Which I know people complained about initially, but now like everybody's used to using it that way. But wait, is that still a thing? Uh, I I thought that got fixed. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I know I that... thought something like that got fixed, but I'm not sure that exact thing got fixed. So I don't. I'd need to check. I haven't played since the last few uh, since the last patch. Uh, let me see here. Well, okay. No, no, no. I see what you mean. I did that on purpose. Uh, <laughs> the When you select a dwarf, like, for hauling, and then it doesn't automatically set it to uh, only selected do this, uh, and it keeps it on everybody does this by default, I did that on purpose because I... Uh, it's one of those features that I think people only notice if it gets in their way. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I would tend to agree. Um, I know that... Uh... I, I, I bring it up because I, I was watching the uh, streamer Deep Space streaming, and that's a feature that he used quite frequently, and it threw him off, and so he said that he was reporting it. But um, if that is intended, uh, that should make it into the patch notes somewhere, probably. Yeah, yeah, it should. Uh, the, the, the intended way to do it is just you click only select and do this after you, you know, make someone do it. Uh, the thing is, people wanted, like, specialized haulers, but didn't necessarily want to make only hauler, like, only their specialized haulers haul. 
No, I, I actually, I actually like, I like that as a change. It was, it was just something changed that wasn't noted as being changed intentionally, you know? Yeah. Multi Z burrows, I think was also not in the patch notes, which is something big people have been asking for. And well, not in the patch notes yet. <laughs> it's probably going to end up in it. Uh, what was I do? I need to get you a screenshot of the new way, the work details. Like, all the hauling stuff is taken by haulers, as usual, but also refuse hauling is under dead crew. Oh, okay. It shows what other jobs it's selected in. Okay, cool. I, I Can I show this in the video, I assume? Yeah. Uh, people are going to wonder when they can add more icons. This is a thought. This is something I want. I have a little to-do saying, to do, saying, like, that it should be a thing, but it's uh, it requires, like, adding some raw stuff, which I don't really want to do. Do like there's other raw stuff I have that I don't want to have to like merge into like a full overhaul of the raw system so that it doesn't take. I mean, it used to take six hours for me to compile on Linux, but now it takes six minutes, so it's less of a problem now. That's uh, good. <laughs> yeah. The, well, the reason it takes that long is because there's one file that takes about forty gigabytes of RAM to compile, and. You know, that's obviously going into swap space, and that's really, really bad for performance. The more icons for jobs is at, is at the front of mind right now because somebody asked about it in the future of the Fortress, and Tarn basically said it was a lack of time thing. Um, but yeah, I I would say that is that is something that I think people are going to continuously ask for because I think it should make it in eventually, but I wouldn't make it the biggest priority. I think there's things that the UI needs first. It's a reasonably high priority, but not top because, like... It's it's important for usability, and it's good stuff. But like, it's not a uh, the, the main thing that I feared that that I that have the main fear I have about this update is that it makes the UI just a little bit more like inconsistent in the short term because it's only a few menus. Because like right now we we have a lot of searching functionality and a lot of menus, which I think is like the kind of the main beef of this update, aside from like the the crash fixes and whatnot. And I, I guess my my curi my curiosity here is like now there's suddenly some inconsistencies, especially like in the kitchens menu, like the plus and minus buttons like don't look like they're they belong at all and almost feel like they're missing assets. Oh, don't worry, that's being fixed. That that's being fixed. That's what I'm waiting on the for the assets for that to download so I can implement them properly. <laughs> that's what I that's what I was under the assumption for. But like, but there there is now suddenly a lot of UI inconsistency, which was like kind of, the the problem with the old UI for Dwarf Fortress wasn't necessarily that like it was just very 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 simple uh, initially. Like if you go back to Dwarf Fortress 2007, the UI takes a couple minutes to kind of wrap your brain around because there's only so many buttons, right? But it just slowly became a Frankenstein's monster of like UI stacked on UI stacked on UI stacked on UI. So when you're adding in these uh, like search men like search bars and adding things to the current UI, is there a process that you are using to make sure that that doesn't start to slowly creep in and happen again? Mostly just by only by not adding anything new outside of like that, like by not adding any new full screens is the main thing I'm trying to do here. Just like stacking too much is like a big problem. And I thought about adding like some weird functionality to like work details. Then I realized where would I fit it and it would be too much. And, and I still want to do it, but I don't know where to put it. And also it would take too long at this point, like advanced work detail uh, stuff, you know, the, the classic suggestion of uh, only top five most skilled do this or only at least competent do this or whatever. Oh boy. Um, that's interesting. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that that's the sort of feature that people would love to see, but like it, it, it kind of, I think UI creep is one of my, is one of the few concerns I have about this update actually, because it's it's already a, a very old game that's already had that already has a lot of stuff stacked on stuff and the clean break of moving to this new layout for UI is a kind of a at least for me has been a breath of fresh air i know it frustrated some people but like it's it's nice to have a clean break to then like work on that this new UI again and it's interesting to see it improve but i just hope it 
constantly improves for the better and improves in a direction that makes learning the game easier for new players and not the alternative, which is what slowly happened with Dwarf Fortress over the years before like 2022. Yeah, it just kept getting more and more UI. I mean, nothing was as bad, at least as the military stuff being added in 2010, but like it's still a lot, just a lot everywhere. All that stuff actually does something. So it has to be somewhere. Yeah. Uh, when, so I'm just going to kind of roll down like what you've actually done so far. So currently, I think the the most modified menu is the kitchen interface. I, I, and my question is, why why did you decide to completely rework the UI for the kitchen specifically? It, it wasn't so much a priority as I looked at the tabs. I started implementing the tabs. And then I thought, why does this have to be tabs when I could make it a filter? That was actually basically the entire thought process. Uh, like, I could rework it on the spot so I it, in such a way that it might be, like... Basically, the main reason was I just thought having all of the kitchen items in one big list would be reasonable once filtering is doable. And that was the easiest way I thought to do it. I, the the only thing that I think is a little bit confusing about the new way the kitchen is laid out is that not everything is brewable. Uh, and it's, for some reason, my brain makes it less clear that some things aren't brewable and some things are. Uh, aside from that, I, I do think it's kind of clunky, albeit probably better version in the long run of that menu. Um, now that we have kind of the framework for searchability, do you have a priority list for other menus you want to add functionality to, or is this just kind of a, do you get to it when you get to it situation? Uh, there is, there, there's a, in my head, there's a sort of priority list, but it's like vague and not fully formed. Like the stone list can stay where it is, but like I thought about getting to it, the stone use list, but I didn't, uh, the standing orders list has some UI oddities, like, uh, which I don't even remember if I fixed them, but like a lot of the automatic reactions, they're cascaded in such a way that they sort of overlap if you have mods on. The chores list ought to be updated, but like it's... Eh, it, like, <laughs> I didn't get to that. Like all the children chores list, you can't search it right now or it, you can't click it either. I should fix that. <laughs> the most important one that needs is the work orders list, which is just... If you look at any, like, real advanced players for it and their work orders list, it's too long and unsearchable and there's a ton. And, like, I have this problem. Everyone has this problem. Who doesn't? Well, <laughs> who doesn't? Everyone who uses that. Even me, I don't use a ton of work orders by a, an endgame for it. I'll have two pages. And it stops scrolling nicely after a bit as well, which is not optimal. <laughs> yeah, it's a big undertaking, though. The very first piece of the very first question I got was when uh, I I started streaming on the the experimental branch for fifty point one two. The literal first question I saw was, uh, "Can I put my work orders into folders yet?" Yeah, that's I I already have a whole folders widget that I'm not even sure I'm using specifically because I wanted to put work orders into folders. I would also request the exact same thing for the minecart screen. <laughs> well, minecart screen is pretty iffy. Yeah, I have a pretty good test for it here that has a ton of work orders and a ton of hauling things from like a DF hack person. It's like a couple burrows, so I can do all the... I could look at all this. And yeah, a lot of these UIs need work, but like I can't... I only... It's only so fast. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, totally. And, uh, people complain that DFX faster. I don't take those to heart at all. There's more people working on DFX. I have. I, I could make an entire video or probably just stream for three hours and complain about the reasons why DFX shouldn't be a priority for most people. But I, I think that's probably a topic for another day, likely. It's a. I, I, I should say this in like a video. It is a difficult uh, thing. Like, people are going to be unsatisfied no matter what you do. Uh, if you work on, like, duplicating or bringing in 
features that DF Hack had. People complain that you brought in features that DF Hack had. But if you never do that, then people will complain that you're like being lazy because you didn't because you weren't working on a feature just because DF Hack has it. I personally think the latter is closer to true, but don't think either is really correct and that it's just sort of a hard thing. All I know is that the majority of the people playing on Steam are not using DF Hack just based off of Steam metrics. So cuz D when you're running DF Hack through Steam, it counts you as playing Dwarf Fortress and DF Hack at the same time. And on average, there's about two to 400 people using DF Hack at any moment on Steam. And there's about 1,000 to 1,500 people playing Dwarf Fortress. So it is a power user tool. And if you want to use power user tools, that's cool. But I don't think that you should expect the exact same experience from a vanilla game as a game using a power user tool. And I something else that we could probably also address here is like the reasons why DF hack isn't integrated into Dwarf Fortress directly. Um, because I think you talked about that in a comment on the last time we chatted. People do ask about that quite a lot. Uh, it's not something you can really integrate. Like, the only way to integrate it would be essentially to do something completely different that superficially resembles DF Hack. It's, uh, I, I've looked into seeing how much integration can be done, and what we currently have, where it explicitly looks for and tries to load DF Hack as soon as it opens, is essentially the best possible with how DF Hack actually works. And, like, handing over, like, you know, information required to make sure all the structures are aligned and things that sort of thing that that's that's the best it gets it's a memory hacking library that means a lot of weird stuff can happen uh i've mentioned this before but sometimes you see things and like i just have to say maybe the compiler thought it would maybe the compiler interpreted this weirdly uh because Ultimately, what DF Hack is doing is like reading memory from a game that was already from a program that was already compiled and modifying that memory. While what Dwarf Fortress itself is doing is compiling it into, you know, other stuff. And these are very different things on the technical level, and uh, like a lot of it sort of looks the same superficially. But if you you can't really integrate them closely i think the situation is people are very used to playing games like RimWorld and games like skyrim you download a mod and install a mod and it's a mod and then often you'll see things like i guess bethesda and their silly attempt to sell mods and um you know in cases like RimWorld, hiring modders and then adding similar features to mods that aren't the mods I think that people see that enough that they think that, oh, why don't you just hire the DF hack guys and do that? Well, one, prob not everybody wants to be hired to do a thing that they're already doing. It's never that simple. And when you're talking about a game that largely most of the biggest mods for it over the years have been because of essentially running cheat engine in the background, which is like my closest analog for memory hacking. It's, it's basically a high level wrapper over cheat engine. It, Cheat Engine is pretty much exactly what DF Hack is, and it's it's a bit hard to implement. <laughs> so it, it would be like it would be like asking Rockstar to implement Cheat Engine into uh, Grand Theft Auto Five so that you can have unlimited rockets. I'm not sure if it's directly comparable, mostly because Grand Theft Auto Five is like a live service sort of thing. Sure, <laughs> I mean in single player. I never played the live service BS in that thing, <laughs> the... but you know what I mean. Yeah, the I mean, Skyrim has SKSE, which is, in fact, basically a, a DF hackish sort of thing. Address library and all that. I didn't even know that. <laughs> I haven't played Skyrim since, like, 2012, so... <laughs> I think... Well, I mean, SKSE is following up on NVSE and FOSE and OBSE and MWSE. It's been going back since Morrowind that they've had all this. Huh. And, well, uh... I'm, I'm not particularly deep in that community, but... The thing is, RimWorld has, like, built-in mod support with... There's this thing you can add on. Like, Unity uh, has a thing for this. Caves of Code does it, too. It's the same deal. I forgot its name. 
<laughs> RimWorld, like like you just you just said it, it, it runs in Unity, right? And it's very modular in that way and very modifiable in that way. And it's difficult to talk about subjects like this without sounding like I'm just being mean to people or sound like I'm coming or without coming across as like just a weird know-it-all. But things that seem very simple are very rarely that simple, right? Like I think you, you said this when we were talking the other day about like quality of life features. It's like it's rarely that simple. Yeah, sometimes it really is. And I th the main goal of this update has been to make it more simple. Right. Like cuz you're 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 doing behind the scenes stuff. So, to kind of wrap this up a little bit, what is your priority going forward with quality of life things and where do you hope to get the game to before you start prioritizing other things? Like this is a thing that like after this update, I'm probably going to have like a whole meeting to talk about where to go next because it's an interesting thought so personally there's two ways i think it could go and i can do both at the same time probably uh it would be better for my like not burning out even so two things the, the first is work order screen needs overhauled it really does and there's a lot that goes into that but like you know being able to do more than just bubble sort even would be <laughs> nice <laughs> sorting one at a time is kind of bad there's there's so much that could be done in the work order screen and that's a whole ordeal unto itself the tasks screen needs looked at places needs searching and so on there's 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 all these screens the game eventually needs to get to this point find that it can wait for a bit because like the second thing i'm thinking is a good look at like adventure mode sweeping passing over some stuff before it releases like I don't know what there is to... Like, I actually don't know where that is necessarily right now. There, Like, it's questionable ra right now, right? Whether uh, building, base building is getting in. I don't know. If I could build that up from the ground up, it would be a good uh, exercise in the new UI stuff. Like, but that this this is something that you would talk about in, like, a proper meeting, right? Rather than, rather than just sort of spitballing about it. I, I mean, kind of the... The, 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 the body of the question is essentially just like, what is the current priority and where would you like it to get to? Which I think you kind of answered, which is you, you want to resort the, uh, the like work orders screen and every, aside from that, like everything else needs kind of the features that the current menus mostly have, like the, you know, the units lists and whatnot. And, um, yeah, the game just needs to be less painful. You don't. You shouldn't have to linear search through anything. The yeah, just looking at the task screen, just being able to search jobs and names, just like the creature screen has, would be good. Yeah, I. I mean, I uh, w w with w with the DF hack search functions actually in the creature screen, I would very frequently find myself typing in construct, and then just like click like pausing all of them or whatnot or canceling a bunch or unpausing them um but uh for, for me it's just i don't think you need to match the features of df hack at all um however the ui does need improving and i'm uh, you're, you're not going to catch me saying it's it's perfect i mean it's fine but it's it, it absolutely needs improvement and you more or less answered the question i guess is uh is some specific screens you want to have bigger overhauls to, but everything just kind of kind of needs feature brevity, and uh, you can you can search by job with the new thing that was mentioned with DF hack. It's good. Uh, there's a lot. Yeah, there's just like that's all just in the info screen. There's other other places like the old. Uh, I legitimately don't remember if this was a vanilla or DF hack feature, which is probably is a problem. problem. <laughs> uh, selecting s selecting the most recently used material, I feel like that was that was a DF hack feature. Yeah, okay. People are <laughs> people talk about it like it was a regression, but I <laughs> yeah. as somebody as somebody who literally never played with DF hack running on older versions, I can tell you if it was a DF hack feature or not, <laughs> because I, the only thing I would use DF hack for was cleaning saves. I would t turn the game off, move the save file to a different install with DF hack, turn it on, and then like, you know, clear the death list or whatever. Yeah, I, do I don't want to be mean. I really don't want to be mean, but, uh, 
I, I kind of want to just label the entire group of people who use the lazy noob pack and then don't use DF hack in <laughs> the Steam version problem users. <laughs> not not really, but like a lot of their feature requests that they're like very vocal about tend to be feature requests. They're like, it used to be this way, now it's not, but it didn't used to be this way. It was DF hack. Regardless, I'm I'm looking forward to this patch working its way into the main branch because there is still uh like i mentioned earlier a very large portion of the player base that is not using df hack and doesn't have any of the searching functionality and um i think that this is going to be a really good patch for the player base as a whole and I, I look forward to seeing people's responses to it um and i'm excited and curious to see your ui uh improvements going forward and uh looking forward to I, I mean, I have no idea what the crash related to pregnancy was, but it, it'll be nice to have, you know, less oddball crashes that make no sense. So I'm, I'm actually not sure either. I fixed it, but like the I don't know what caused the pregnancy to be crashy. It's like the the baby didn't have a father or something. Huh. I, I don't know. <laughs> OK, but it was Jesus can't yeah. exist in Dwarf Fortress, I suppose. Uh, th that's the weird. Th well, you know what? Okay, let me think about this. Is that how dem demigods are born? I think the game. Okay, so there's a few ways. The game likes to crash if you, like, do the, the way the way pregnancy works. The game likes to crash if you do basically anything weird with the, uh, donor. Uh, sex doesn't matter. So like, you can have, like, two mothers they're, or whatever. They're like that's the lesbian fine. geckos. Different species. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, different species. The the self replicating uh, geckos. One from Arizona yeah. or whatever. The, the. I mean, the game needs a of a parody. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> the the important thing here is different race crashes. That is different species. Different uh, like wrong appearance modifiers is actually why that tends to crash but even if they have the same it tends to crash anyway uh i think having no having no donor at all crashes uh like all sorts of stuff like that transforming into a male while pregnant that doesn't crash that actually works gives them a bad thought for the miscarriage which is interesting huh, i don't think i've ever seen that actually but it doesn't happen often. I, saw, I think i saw it once and it was a combat dwarf but this was a long time ago. It seems vaguely familiar. That can happen, I think. And where beast transformations also cause miscarriages, so you could see mm. that. Ooh, that's dark. <laughs> yeah, I mean, before there was like safe corruption owing to where beast pregnancies off screen that crash because you know the father's got a different species than the mother uh, because the mother's a where beast huh. at the time. Yeah, right. And and the transformation isn't properly. Or rather, the transformation didn't properly cause the like the the pregnancy to terminate on like this is really dark. Wow, <laughs> on, on the Dwarf full Fortress, moon. Fortress. It's a lovely video game until it turns into a creepy pasta. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I it it it's it's lovely to talk to you and uh, get get the chance to get some insights on things that you're working on, and uh, I, I look forward to speaking again in the future. Just so much. Well, the world screen needs zooming, etc. There's so much. <laughs>